Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. I hope you are all happy and healthy doing the things that you love to do with the people that you love to do them with. It is Tuesday. It is the 2024 version of June the 18th. And this is your transfer news, views and clues update. Guys, before we get into it, um, I was in brutally honest yesterday. I told you not to watch, not to even bother watching the show because there was that little noise and news to get involved with. 10,000 of you still decided to, but, uh, and I appreciate the, uh, the loyalty and the support. It was a bit of a test as well to see what would happen. Uh, on today's episode of what probably isn't going to happen anyway, we've got some new news coming out and we've got some updates. Just after I uploaded yesterday's video, the noise came out that Tottenham have agreed personal terms with Ivan Tony, but... The bid that Brentford are holding out for is far higher than what Tottenham are willing to pay at the moment. I think, as I said before, 40 to 45 million, somewhere around there is Tottenham's level. 55, 60, 65 million is what Brentford wants. I think that neither team will meet in the middle easily, but I think that there will be some compromise at some point. But if it's true that Tottenham have, in fact, agreed personal terms and that of course on paper at least suggests that that is the selection that Tottenham are going to go with and Santiago Jimenez may be slightly down the pecking order now, I think there's less risk with Tony to be entirely honest there's risk with both but I do think there's a little bit less risk with uh, with Ivan Tony just given the fact that he has Premier League experience yes his age means that by the end of his contract there'll be less kind of sell-on value there's less of an asset there and so from a Daniel Levy mindset perspective I'm sure he would rather get on board for similar sorts of money, rather get on board someone who will reach the peak of their career at 27, 28, by the time that the contract would run down, than be at 33, 34 and have very little sell-on value. But according to some reports this morning, Daniel Levy is and has been persuaded to trust Ange and the, uh, the scouts with what he wants. And according to... Uh, well, the boot room are putting it out there. I'm trying to find the initial the initial uh, link, and I can't. I think it's according to football transfers who who somehow have emerged as a a link worthy source that gets shared around by bigger kind of assets, if you like, on bigger bigger um, channels or uh, pages on Twitter as a reliable source. But apparently, the outlet claims that Spurs are willing to hand the Aussie, a £100 million budget to strengthen his attack this summer. Uh, which, I'm not sure if that just means £100 million as the budget overall, or whether that means £100 million just on what he wants in that particular region of the pitch. Let's just presume, though, that Eze is still number one target at £60 million, £68 million. Then, obviously, that would be pushing the boundaries if you were to include Ivan Tony on it. But, look, I personally don't mind the idea of Ivan Tony. I do I fully fit fully functioning, despite his personality issues, question marks, I think he can bang in the goals and be a difference maker, a needle mover for Tottenham. And so I'm on board with it, but we'll see what happens with Brentford. They screwed around with regards to Raya. And, you know, I'm sure the relationship's a little bit kind of frosty after that. So whether or not it will happen, but then Tottenham did do business with them around Serge Regal more recently as a loan deal. So I hope that people put things to one side and just get on with business at that level. Let me bring to you another story, which I find uh, quite interesting, but quite incredibly stupid if it's true. And that is 34-year-old, 35-year-old, I think it is, Mats Hummel, uh, Hummels, uh, Dortmund player, German legend, centre-back, 1 meter 95 so about 6 foot 3, 6 foot 4. He played 25 times for Dortmund last season, scored a few goals, was in the starting 11 about 60% of the time and played about half of the minutes available for Dortmund. Was very, very good. Got them on, obviously, to the Champions League final. A real leader of the club. He's out of contract and on a free transfer. Wants to stay in Europe. Doesn't want to go to Saudi Arabia for the payoff, the payday. Would like to come to the Premier League. And Tottenham are amongst about 10 different teams that apparently have held talks with the agent and are on the consideration list. Now, the pros and the cons of Mats Hummels, 
Matt Hummels is a leader. We don't have, I don't think, particularly too many mature leaders at the club. Um, you know, personally, whilst I understand why Sonny is the captain, I don't think he necessarily exudes captain material in the old traditional sense of captaincy. The game has changed, right? So, you know, the Roy Keane style captaincy, I don't know if that would go down too well in the kind of woke world of 2024. But uh, there is still different versions of leadership that are more meaningful than others in this day and age. And I think that Matt Hummels does present something of that nature. Tottenham are playing a lot of games next year. In fact, you know, the Premier League fixtures have just come out. I'll throw them on the screen um, now so you can see them. I haven't got them in front of me, but basically, you know, it's same old, same old. The, 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 the first couple of months of the season, you play like three games here, three games there. A couple of fixtures, then a break for two weeks for internationals. Like the most frustratingly stupid and awkward start to the season. Uh, that, and it happens, I think, three times throughout the season again, similar to this year. And it's the year after the Euro, so it shouldn't be like that. But it is. It's ridiculous. It's terrible. I hate it. And then, of course, you get to December and you have all of the games that have been missed trying to be crammed in. And I think, like Arsenal last year, played 10 games in December and won nine of them. I think Tottenham, if they're still in the League Cup and obviously playing the Europa League games during that particular period, plus the league fixtures that are scheduled, I think it could be possible that Tottenham would also face 10 games in December, which is crazy. Maybe even 11 games in December, I think, from memory. I, like, I might be wrong about that, so don't quote me or don't hold me to it. But essentially, like a game every three days over, over Christmas, which obviously strengthens the need for a bigger squad, a deeper squad more variety. You really hope with all of your fingers and everything else crossed that you don't get too many injuries during that early period of the season. Otherwise, you're really going to struggle with fitness. Tottenham struggled, let's be honest, with uh, one game a week at times and sometimes one game every two weeks in Angie's first season with the fitness thing. It looked like we were exhausted at times. Although having said that, most of the time when we were losing games, we managed to get better and stronger as the games went on. And a lot of the games were turned around late, like Nottingham Forest at home, for example, and just a few of them, Sheffield United, uh, where you know our presence and perseverance and our approach to the game maybe had more of an impact. Whilst it had an impact on us and is a tiring thing to do all the time, uh, had an impact on the opposition as well uh, on an individual basis. So... Um, Lots to consider about the complexity and the compression of the of the fixture list. And so we do definitely need to have sort of two capable options in every position. And we are looking for that center back. Now, Mats Hummels, for me, he's brilliant in the air. He's a brilliant tackler. He's a fantastic on-the-ball passer. He ticks a lot of boxes. But the one massive, major, uh, gaping hole in his skill set is pace. And he's used to playing in a more pragmatic formation, more pragmatic system with a lower line. And that, unfortunately, is the red flag. It's the kind of concept killer for me. And the idea of signing him, whilst, yes, he ticks a lot of boxes in terms of what he can bring to the team in maturity. And like I say, I wouldn't be afraid with him being on the ball, but in those transitions, in the times when mistakes happen and we get uh, the ball put over the top into the channels, do you want Matt Hummels running? He's slower than... You know, I I re I've, I'd reckon I could maybe hold my own in a foot race with him. That's that's ridiculous, a ridiculous thing to say. Of course I couldn't, but he is still slow, very very slow, and uh, and and so he, he just doesn't fit the system. Doesn't fit the system at all. So for me, uh, yeah, let him go to one of the other 150 million clubs that will be looking at him on a free transfer. He's only on 112 grand a week as well, I think. So, um, you know whether or not that would change with the agent's fees and uh, the fact that he's on a free transfer, who knows? But for me, uh, he can hold talks with us as much as he wants, but I don't want him to sign for us. For what it's worth, I was speaking to Henry Wright this morning and he told me that Paul O'Keefe put a tweet out. Now, I haven't seen this tweet, guys. I haven't seen it. So I've been looking through Paul O'Keefe and I can't seem to find it. But he says that Tottenham's recruitment team are on holiday until next week, end of next week, I think, is what he said. Now, again, I, I can't find Paul O'Keefe's tweet on that. But if that's true, then what 
what's going on there? What is going on there? Like, it, I know that a lot of the homework's been done. And says, don't worry, we've been working all winter on, on what we want to do this summer. We're quite advanced on our plans. We know what we need. We know what we want. But at the same, and that's fine. It's good. So you should be. If you are a scout, if you are a director of football or whatever, then your work, whilst you can only be active, necessarily active in the formalizing of deals during certain months of the year, you're paid a full-time salary. And so you would hope that that work carries over into the months where you're doing your homework, your planning, your research, your, your conversations and all those things. That goes without saying. Right, it goes without saying. It's obvious, but to say that, that to hear that these guys are on holiday for a couple of weeks during the Euros, if that's true, then I don't care if the homework's been done. I couldn't care less if they've spent all year working hard on figuring out who it is that they want and and you know identifying, looking at the data and the video analysis and yada yada yada, and then going, okay, here's the list of twenty names. Things happen, opportunities arise, and you know, things I was going with my camera there. And and it is just a madness to me to hear the idea that certain people that are decision makers within the actual transfer ideology of the club are sitting on a beach somewhere drinking pina coladas. I don't know if it's true, but if it's true, then it's 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 absolutely insane because first of all, the Euros are on. Things happen. People pop up. People make mistakes. Injuries occur. Um, I don't know. Conversations, flare-ups, opportunities arise that you may not have had on your list that should have been on your list. And if you're sitting there drinking a pina colada then watching what happened last night in the French game or whatever, then I'm sorry. It's the most ridiculous time of the year to be on holiday. Sorry to lose my, 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 uh, my head about this, but go on holiday the day the window closes. Take your two weeker then, because you've got a long time then to catch up after the fact, right? Don't do it during the, the, the opening gambit of the window when the Euros are on. Sorry. And I don't, like I said, I don't even know if it's true, but if it is true, it's stupid. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, Tottenham links again to Desiree um, Doué, or however you say his name, French winger. They're coming back. They were out last week. They're back again. Tottenham are very interested in this player. I really do like this guy. Tricky step over merchant. You know, does everything that you like in a one-on-one -on -one direct winger. Um, but yeah, again, the, the links are just the links, and they're they're familiar. They're nothing new about them. Tottenham are considering, offering, thinking about, con contemplating making a bid. FC. This is what we're dealing with apparently right now because the journalists have got nothing new to talk about. Maybe because the people that are the scouts are on holiday drinking sangria. Lucky gits. Uh, other stories I wanted to tell you about. Uh, apparently, Tottenham are interested. Tottenham target Adam Wharton of, of Crystal Palace. Declan Rice has described him as incredibly silky is a story. This is how ludicrous this whole thing has got. Uh, Blackburn Rovers sold them sold him to Crystal Palace in January. He's been at he's been at Palace. He's been at Palace for four months, for six months. And Tottenham are linked with him. Like we have, Blackburn Rovers haven't even been paid their full amount on the potential of the deal from Palace yet. And because of Palace's injuries, Wharton steps up, takes his chance. Good for him. He gets a little slot in the Euro 24 initial squad. Doesn't quite make it. Bloody yada, yada. Yes, looks like a brilliant player. But he's a Palace player. He's just become a Palace player. He is not going to be leaving Palace within six months of joining. It's madness. Why are we talking about this? Why am I bringing this to your attention? Because it's in the news. And so I bring you the views and the clues. Talking about people that talk too much about things that aren't particularly necessary. Guess whose agent has been at it again? Radu Dragasin. Dragasin. After the 3-0 win over Ukraine and the Euros on Monday night, the, the agent said, Dragasin, what can I say? It doesn't surprise me anymore because I know how he works. If he continues like this, he could become one of the best central defenders in the world. Well, surely next year he will get a lot of minutes because, like I say, the fixture list is um, is out. Well, what, what, one good thing about the fixture list is that it, it doesn't look like Tottenham have got any particular kind of um, 
a run of fixtures where, you know, you've got like Liverpool away, then Arsenal away, then Chelsea away. Kind of like the way our end of season uh, figured out. I think we start with Leicester away. I think we've got Everton at home, Newcastle away. I think we've got Arsenal at home um, all in the first four. The, the Europa League fixtures aren't out yet. They'll be out, I think, next week or the week after. I'll bring that to you when we see them. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, there's also doubts around Manuel Solomon's future at the club. A little bit of other news for you there that uh, Tottenham might be looking to move him on. And you know, if you bring in Eberich Eze, you bring in Ivan, Ivan Tony or Jimenez, if those are the two guys that I keep saying look like the most likely forward, if Solomon does leave for five, 10 million quid, then, um, you know, maybe there's room then for enough one more winger. If you, if you think, you know, Sonny, per, uh, uh, Kulusevsky, Johnson, Solomon, and, um, and Timo Werner, if Solomon's out, then Eze comes in, but is Eze really a left winger? Do we bring in someone else like a, a, a Desiree Due? I, I, I don't know. Well, this is this is uh, this is as kind of stretch that this video is going to get. The last thing I will say, guys, is I've been talking to you a lot recently about uh, outgoings and how Tottenham are clearly trying to test the market to see what the interest is in our players, what the what the valuations are of the bids that are coming. And Hoybier, we received a bid of like what was it, eight million euros yesterday from from Fenerbahce, allegedly. Uh, well, his agent's come out and apparently has been... Uh, he said via... This, this is what his agent said via... Uh, Luca Puccinelli is his agent. He said via Fabrizio Romano. Uh, a player like him will surely be part of a club with great ambition or project because he is not just a strong player, but with characters, with a character made to fight for important things every year. Pierre feels comfortable in the pressure to win, and I am working in this sense. He is telling me that every year he dreams of trophies at the end of the season and doesn't like to play for nothing. This is his mindset. This is his mission. He added, I am working on the many requests that we have already received, yes, but we will analyze all the possibilities after the Euros during the holidays when we will spend some time together and then look forward to the next chapter. The national team is giving him back his lost, his lost serenity now. I'm 100% sure that whoever signs to Hoybier will do a bargain. Yeah. So what can we assume from that? That he thinks he's worthy, as I've said for ages, he thinks he's worthy of winning trophies. He thinks he should be fighting for trophies. Clearly, he's unhappy with the way he's not been prioritized at Tottenham, having a sly little dig at Tottenham's lack of trophy success. He also saying that they're analyzing lots of offers, but that the, the deal won't happen until after the Euros. We know that. That's a rule. And that then they'll sit down and think about everything. And who and he said, whoever gets the deal will get a bargain. What does that mean? A good player going for cheap. A very good player that's going to go on the cheap. Same as Hoybier. Sorry, same as Lo Celso. Same as Brian Hill to a degree. If you pick the right club, Brian Hill is a very good player for the right club, for the right system. Serge Regulon. You know? Just feels like. Premier League play Premier League clubs are always getting abused by European teams. They feel like they are the uh the sugar daddies, if you like. They have to they have to put all of the, the talent on the table for nothing, expect very little back. But when it comes to the other way around, no, 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 no. You're a Premier League club. You gotta pay four times more. Annoys me. Everything about today's news annoys me. Matt Hummel's stupid link, not gonna come to Tottenham. The rest of it's just repeating it. I'm sorry, 20 minutes of your life probably wasted, 20 minutes of mine wasted too. I do apologize, but it's in the news views and clues, so I'll bring it to your attention. I love you all. There really isn't anything else, I don't believe. Um, Ivan Tony, looks like we've agreed terms. Let me know. Are you happy with him? If he does come in, at what price point do you think it will happen? Love you all. See you tomorrow, hopefully with some better news and uh, maybe a live stream. Take care, guys. Ciao, ciao.